Okay. Well, we can get started with this much. And I'm so sorry to everyone, and I hope it continues to work. Well, good afternoon, probably by now, <laughs> um, but it is good morning. Get your students excited about computer science using robotics from Lego Education. Um, if you don't mind, I can do a quick uh, Great. viral on you. Oh, you certainly may. Make it very fast because we are so late. Okay. Um, so um, I'll go through this pretty fast, but um, Kelly has partnered with Lego um, since 2000 as a curriculum specialist. Um, she's a global master trainer and solutions manager with Lego. Um, she's well-traveled, um, working in Germany and Japan. Um, she holds degrees from University of Missouri, Columbus University, and College of Notre Dame. And she has additional studies completed in so uh, at Sophia University in Tokyo, Japan. Um, so without further ado, the amazing Kelly Redden. Thank you. And so we are going to try to get kids excited here. And um, our Lego education is um, our mission is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. And so the builders of tomorrow to us are the builders of the future, the kids who are confident in creating their ideas and trying them out and persevering through failure. And so we've noticed, and um, there is a study done, that students who do um, hands-on learning activities on a regular basis, they outperform their peers in math and science. And I've noticed that teachers who are conducting hands-on activities, they're having a lot more fun in the classroom. They're enjoying their students. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is get some Lego bricks, if you have them. And if you don't, no problem. All you need is a paper and pencil, because you'll be able to do some hands-on activities with that. First, I'd just like you, while you're gathering those, to think about computer science. And when you think of computer science, what do you think about? Do you think about the study of computers, or do you think the impacts of computing, or do you think about hardware and software and testing and refining artifacts? These are a lot of different ideas that people think of when they think about computer science. Now, I hope everybody's gathered their materials. And so what I'd like you to do is make a large four by four grid on a sheet of paper. And if you have Lego bricks, you can choose four of each different color. If you don't, you can either, you know, make four different colors or you can cut paper and uh, tear it or you can just write different words down, different color words down as we go through this. Hey, Kelly, really quickly, can you post the link yes. to the uh, Google Slides or the, to the can PowerPoint, I, I should say, or do you have this on the I'm, Google Slide version? Um, no, I don't. Okay. But I can, I can post this. I mean, I can post these later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So if you have an EV3 or a Spike Prime set in front of you, if you will get four of each different, four of four different colors. So I personally have used my Spike Prime set. And I have four yellow uh, elements. The ones I chose happen to be, and you don't have to choose the same ones, are in a small L-shaped Technic block. And then I have four magenta colored, and they're called biscuits, but they look like they have a little um, cross in holes on them. And then I have four small two by two round plates and, and four black uh, little round sizers. And so if you want to get anything that's small, small pieces that are the same color, and again, if you're writing on just paper, go ahead and feel free to just use, you can write color words even. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to put color one, and I just call them color one, two, three, and four, so everybody can be on the same page, but a black, a yellow, a magenta, and a blue, if you have those, in these blocks. And what this is, is a very simplified Sudoku puzzle, because it's only a two by two square with 
four two by two squares. And so this is a great unplugged activity. And what we'd like to do is be able to show kids that we can now work from this into variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the next slide and you'll see I've taken the, the numbers off, the color numbers. But we can decompose and break this down into smaller parts. We can then generalize and recognize some patterns. Think algorithmically by solving one of these squares at a time. And then we can evaluate and see if we can make this into kind of a um, something that we can then abstract and, and explain. So the first thing is let's decompose the problem. And let's, what steps might I use to figure it out? Well, I could, and I'm gonna, I've written these out, so I'm gonna go to the next slide. I could look at the blocks, bricks that are missing in row one. So I'm gonna look at square in the upper left corner, that's column one, row one. And I'm gonna look at the bricks that are missing in row one. So what colors are missing in row one? Magenta and blue. And if I look at the bricks that are missing in column one, in column one, it's black and blue. And then if I look at the bricks that are missing in quadrant, that's the upper left four bricks, what's missing there would be magenta and blue. Now, there was only one brick color that was missing from all three of those subsets before. And that was blue because I had magenta and blue in the row, but I, when I went to the column, magenta was still there, was already there. So I, I had blue left, and then between the two colors that are missing in the first quadrant, I only had blue that would fit all three. So we know that blue fits there. So we now should go to another square and see if we can use this same pattern. So let's go to the missing, what's missing in row two, column three. So that would be in the second quadrant. Row two, what's missing in row two? Blue and magenta. What's missing in column three? Black and yellow. No, I'm sorry, black and Blue is missing in the second, in the third column, black and blue. And so when I look at the, what's missing then in the uh, quadrant, you'll see that black and magenta are missing in that. So there was only, again, one color that was missing from all three of those sets and that was black. So let's move to the next thing that we can do. So were there patterns that you noticed between your first and second set of directions? The first set of directions started with, look at the bricks that are in missing in row one. The second set of directions started with, look at the bricks that are missing in row two. So now we can do an abstraction and we could make Look at the bricks that are missing in row blank, and that blank or X can become our variable. And then we could do the same thing with column one versus or column three. And we could check that with look at the bricks that are missing in column X or Y. Okay, and so those become our variables. And if that works, we should take that set of directions and, may, and make it work with this particular puzzle. So let's just check one and make sure it works. So let's do row one, column two. So that's in that first quadrant. So row one, what's missing from row one? Red and yellow. What's missing in column two, yellow, 
and blue. What's missing from quadrant one, yellow and green. So yellow was the only one that was missing from all three. Now it is possible, as you know if you're doing Sudoku, that you would not have a full, full information. So you might have more than one that would be missing from a particular location, which means that then you would have to go on to another square to see if you could get that information in another square and then come back later to a, to a square and say, oh, now I do have enough information to narrow that down. So I really like to use this. And of course, you can take this further and make different size puzzles. Now, what we're going to talk about today is physical computing. And there are a couple different, different ways that you can look at physical computing. But what we're trying to do is put the design process together with software. So we put hardware together with software to do the physical computing. And one of the things that has come up is that when kids are doing physical computing, they are, in fact, um, long, they, they persevere longer with the tasks at hand. They will not give up nearly as quickly. And one of the things that Seymour Papard talked about with programming languages is that you should have a, lo a low floor, a high ceiling, and wide walls. And I think you can actually apply that to the hardware as well. But with, with the programming, you want to have something that's very quick and easy to get started with, but that then as kids progress and in their knowledge, you can keep sending them higher and higher and giving them more complex tasks over time to keep them engaged and keep them learning. And the wide walls um, allow us to have a lot of different interests supported by the by the teacher and the students so that their kids are staying engaged at all times. Lego Mindstorms EV3, and that stands for Evolution 3, has been around for many years. Um, and it is a great product that we are trying to position as eighth grade and above and into high school. And there's a lot of new curriculum that has come out and will be coming out. But one of the things I think is really nice, okay, I'm trying to get my PowerPoint to go forward one, there we go, is, is that it has free curriculum and free software that are able to be used on multiple devices. So I can use it on my laptop, I can use it on my desktop, I can use it on a tablet, I can use it on a Chromebook. And we now have multiple languages that also are supported. Now, all languages are not supported on all devices. And so you do have to choose the device um, language that you can um, support. So. If you are going to use, for example, Scratch and program with a Scratch extension, then you'll want to use something that, so a, a Chromebook works really well for that, but it doesn't work yet, yet on a desk, on, a, on an iPad. So if you are interested, if you have a MacBook, you're going to use the desktop classroom software, and that is Scratch-based, but it's an actual Lego education product. We also have um, MakeCode, Python, and, and other, you know, Tinker that you can use depending on what language you're choosing. Our own products have that very easy to get started low floor, and they also take you up to um, much greater capacity as you go through them. So we have definitely looked at the EV3 with career readiness in mind. So you can build and program very simple robots for transportation, 
and for moving materials. And you can also program them to be color sorters. You can program them to have pick and place robotics. So you can choose the application or the career readiness that you're trying to get through to, um, to get those kids interested in those careers and then have them do activities that, that speak to those. So a question from the um, chat is, if EV3 is eighth grade and above, do you recommend Spike for six through seven? Yes, and even into eighth grade. So there's an overlap here. So you can do Spike at six, seven, eight, and even into ninth grade, depending on what it is that you are, you know, what you're trying to do. Um, so it just depends on what what your goals and vision are. That uh, question was from Kristen. And then we have one from Lily about um, using Spike for fourth or fifth graders. I have seen Spike used in fourth and fifth grade, but we do is probably a is typically what the curriculum would fit better, that it is certainly possible. And I know that people who are doing uh, first Lego League or um, World Robotics Organization competitions, they will bring down the spike to fourth and fifth grade. But the curriculum is really focused at this point on sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So it's not a matter of ability, it's a matter of where the curriculum is located. And also, um, do you have any resources for EV3 Mindstorm sets for fourth and fifth, as well as sharing um, context for Spike in fourth and fifth? Okay, so EV3 in fourth and fifth grade has typically been people who are using that for competition. Um, we don't particularly have a specific set of curriculum for EV3 down in fourth and fifth. You can certainly use the tutorials and get started and the getting started. But um, for, for Spike, we, we have some very simple activities, again, that you can use down there. But as far as an absolute curriculum, no, that's why we have the we do down in the, in the elementary level. So there are resources available on our website. Everything is, all of our curriculum and software are free. So you're certainly welcome to look through it. And if somebody wants to contact myself or Sonia Glassberg, who's, I will show that at the end, they will be able to um, get some more information specifically about that. And just want to update from a timing standpoint, I was able to get the session extended uh, 30 minutes. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. So um, instead of ending at 1115, uh, we'll end at 1145. Okay. And I, I will, because of the time, try to to make it even a little bit shorter just because, and we'll see if I can get the document camera to work. I'm not confident that it's going to this morning. No worries. Because of all the issues we've had. Oh, yeah. All right. So um, we do have several programming languages available. And here's where I'm going to show you for um, uh, we do going up to fourth and fifth. When you use it with Scratch, you can really extend because you can, and I've even seen people use um, Scratch with EB3 and Spike Prime down at those levels. And that's where I was going to tell you. We can, I'm going to go in and show you the EB3 with Scratch down there. Um, in just a few minutes. So that can be a way that you can interact, inter interact the hub and the motors and everything with sprites on screen. And that really allows you to have a lot of projects either with WeDo or EV3. But you can see that you have several different activities or I'm sorry, programming languages. So you can use make code and Apple Swift playground and, and several different ones with the EV3. 
So I'm going to I'm going to stop here before I go into Spike Prime and I'm going to try and share a different window with you and I'm going to go into my Google for and let's see. First I'm going to have to go into I lost my connection so I have to go into my scratch link. I don't know if you're seeing this or not, but if you are, that's fine. Scratch link is running. Okay. Yes. And so now I'm oh, going to go. Okay. And so I'm going to try to go back to my Google and go to scratch.mit.edu. Are you seeing this screen? No, it's still on the presentation. All right. I'm going to try and go back in to that and see if I can. Share a different window. Okay. Share a different window. Come on. Let me share a different window. I need my Chrome tab. Now, can you see Scratch potentially? Um, nope, not yet. Okay. Still trying to get my screen to share the correct one. Chrome tab, share. It's not giving me a live share. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it, you know, when you go down to share, it's just not there. Oh, it's not giving you the option to click on it. it. It's not, you know, it's not giving me the option to, to change my share. Okay. Let's just, we're, we're just going to, I'll just move on. Okay. I, I don't want to, bel to belate this anymore because clearly we're having such issues. Okay. So now, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's going to, but that's not oh. it. But that's yeah. not the right share. Okay. It should, it should be, I want it to share my Google, which means that it is not, I don't want to share that. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> well, it looks like we're getting somewhere. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So a little bit, but not what I want it to do. What if you go to scratch on this screen? Well, that's what I was trying to do was go on this screen. So let's, is it, I need to be, let's see, I kill this. All right. So now you should not, are you seeing me? I still see you. And okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm going to. Try again and share. Now do you see Scratch? Yes. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, to go in here. I've already signed in, but I'm going to go to create. And it's creating a project for me. And now I'm going to go down to the lower left corner. It says add extensions. And I'm going to add the EV3 Mindstorms extension. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to get that to run and I it sees I, I see that it is up there and I'm gonna connect to my EV3 in a minute but I want to show you that I can do something very simple so I'm gonna go to events and I'm just gonna bring out when clicked and that green flag is what I click to make these programs work and they will work simultaneously. 
So I'm going to go down to my EV3, and I have motors that I can turn on. Now my motors are not in A, they're in B and C. So I've put them in B and C, and then I can have it make a sound. So I'll just make the, the meow sound. And first thing I'm going to have to do is connect my EV3, which is what it was trying to tell me earlier, because it had become disconnected. So... So it is ready with the Bluetooth, and my, my machine is ready with Bluetooth. So we're going to try and connect those. Go back down here, see if I can make sure, yes, it has been. Try again. It is just, this is just not, <laughs> this is just not the day for this, I can tell you. Um, so normally very quick and easy. I had it, I had it Bluetooth and working prior to us getting together. But if I click this green flag, you can see that it, you could hear the meow, but it, it went through and it would have turned my, my, ro my robot on. So very quick and easy. I'm not sure what all is going on with the computers today with, and, and trying to get through all these screens and whatnot. I don't know why it's not working, but it was completely uh, working before I started. So... And I, so this is a very quick and easy way. And you have these sprites, which are these little cats that you can, and other animals that you can bring in. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you that makes it really easy to get started is look that they have tutorials. So you can go through tutorials before you add in the EV3. But the EV3 is very easy to get started with once you understand, because you have only a few extra um, blocks that you can that you need to use so it's very quick and easy to get started so now i'm going going mm -hmm. do you have questions yes so there's a, a question from rick uh, does this scratch program work with nxts as well um let's let's look i don't believe that we have an uh an extension for the nxt but let's just look and see what extensions because i know we do for we do and we do for boost no i do not see an nxt located here so there's no extension for nxt i didn't think there was but i wanted to be sure all right i'm going to go back in and share my PowerPoint. All right. And we're going to talk about Spike Prime. And Spike Prime came out in January of this year, so it's brand new. It has unit plans, and, and of course, it has our bricks and the um, lots of sensors and um, the hub, of course, and motors, and then coding. And we do offer professional development and teacher training for all of our products. So let's look at, come on to the next slide. <laughs> oh my goodness, now it says PowerPoint's not responding. Oh, there it is. Okay, so our hub has six input output ports, which is different from the EB3. So this one, they're both input and output, and it has a five by five light matrix that you can change what the lights show. And inside the hub is a gyro, which is really nice because it's just like your cell phone where it can determine what's up and down and left and right and if it's turned over. It also comes with a rechargeable battery and it is Bluetooth connect uh, connectable. Now in the sensors, 
because the gyro sensor is in the hub, we don't have a separate gyro sensor. But we do have a color sensor, and it senses color and the ambient light, as well as a distance sensor. And this time, instead of a touch sensor, it's a force sensor. So now it will determine in Newtons how much pressure has been put on. And there are um, motors. So we have one large and two medium motors with this set. There's a question from Awen, is Spike Prime Lego? Yes, it's Lego Education. So Spike Prime is from Lego Education. And when we we look at the program, and I'm going to try to I'm going to try to show that screen as well um, in a minute. But we're going to to go in and look at the way that this is set up. So let me try and go to the next screen. And let's bring this up and see if I can go into my window application. And what do I want to show? I want to show application window. Can you see my Spike Prime now application? Great. OK. It's <laughs> all right. Is is it still showing? Because I it has dropped off my screen. Yes, the screen has gone dark. Oh, we is back. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through and look at this. It has um, different se uh, segments. So this is the home page, and it will also we can look at. Starting, getting started, units, the, there are four units, and um, and it's, it's not quite right working for me here still. This is very strange. So let me see if I can get, it's, this is so strange, but it's not showing on my screen. So... I don't know why. Has it gone black for you? I still see get started with Spike Prime. Okay. I have no control over it now. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Okay. Let's try something else. Screen only. I'll be. I just, I just cannot uh, control it. It's not, it's not allowing me to do anything but look at this screen, hmm. which is amazing. <laughs> But since I've had everything else not responding, I'm not surprised. But this is unbelievable that I cannot get in there. All right. So there, there are four units, and I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint rather than try and um, uh, continue struggling with that so that everyone can at least see what's there. Uh, let's see. I want this to be up. Come on, PowerPoint. Please. <laughs> Not responding. <laughs> oh, my right? heavens. Wow. This is Murphy's Day, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. Now, PowerPoint again? Oh, it looks like it's responding back. again. Yes. Presentation. Okay, great. Okay. So there are four units. 
and the Invention Squad Kickstarter Business Life Hacks and Competition Ready. And you can see that there's STEAM, but the E is um, highlighted in Invention Squad. And that means that it is completely in engineering. So um, we're really going through the engineering process, the design process, how kids can learn that. And the end is a culminating activity to build a personal um, device. And then for Kickstart a Business, they go through analyzing and developing and using data, um, a little bit of data there, but a lot of analyzing and developing computational th thinking as they go through a business. And so they're going to go through one, and I'll give you an example, track your package. So they're going to have to be able to um, fix programming. It's debugging of a program that is supposed to be able to take your package from this from the location where it's sold to your home and they have to figure out how do they fix that programming in invention squad there was one that was called broken and they have to learn how to fix a model that is broken in life hacks they're working with a lot of data so they go out to the net and um, find information on the weather in different places, as one example. And then competition ready is what's going to get you ready. They're going to build some models that will be able to be used in a competition. Now, part of competition ready, the models do require the extension pack or the expansion pack, I should say. And so that one is the only one that requires any extra materials. But if you are going to competition, you would want to get an expansion pack because of the fact that it has different wheels for one thing. I mean, there's a lot of things in there, but definitely wheels um, is a big draw. So what we're trying to do with LEGO is make and LEGO education is to get every type of learner involved. So the kids who are more interested in designing, we want them to be involved. The kids who are interested in programming, we want them to be involved. The kids who are interested in business, in manufacturing, in um, transportation, all of those have, there are lessons for all of those kids to keep them interested. And we want them to build confidence so that they feel good about their ability to do STEAM and their ability to have great ideas and see them come to fruition. So do we have any more questions? I'm so sorry that I had so many technical difficulties today. Couldn't show my document camera and my, my uh, presentation was falling apart as far as, you know, not responding. But do we have any additional questions today? Yes, Kaywin um, wanted to know, um, would you need an additional color and color sensor for competition? And would the competitions also be virtual? There are no virtual competitions at this moment, although WRO, which is the World's Robotics Organization, is creating one. Lego, um, the first Lego League does not have that at this point, and I'm not certain what they are planning to do if they are going to go to virtual competition. So I'm not aware of that at this moment. That doesn't mean they are not. Um, as far as uh, getting kids, if they need an extra motor, there is an extra color sensor in the competition or in the expansion pack. Um, you can buy motors separately. Sometimes some kids and teams do want additional motors, but not always. They're usually with three motors. That's usually enough for most of the, the competitions. And then um, Kaywin also asked, um, would the competition be like Lego first? Well, the their competitions, we have helped school districts create their own intra-district competitions so that they can get started 
with competitions and then decide how they want, you know, how many teams they want to go on to some, an organization like either first or WRO. Part of that depends on the time commitment that everyone in, in the district has. And the other part is the, the monetary part. Because if you have an intra-district competition, of course, the cost is far less than if you have, uh, if you join an organization. Now, WRO, their, their um, competition is a lot less expensive than, than the first Lego League but it is smaller in scope in the United States because it's a very, very international. It's based on the Olympics. And so, for example, in the United States, First Lego League will have their, not only their states, but then they will have regionals and they can go to the um, big international, which we have, they have two competitions that are the big world, world championships in the United States. WRO has competitions and they also do have a virtual um, they're they're putting up on their site very soon if it's not there yet a virtual practice mode that you can you can utilize if you are going to have a team and those teams um, move the competition moves every year to a different country so you you become a winner in the United States, and then you move. Then, for example, then you would represent the United States, like in the Olympics, and move and go to Dubai or to Germany or to China or Japan. So they have not held one yet in the United States, but they move to a different country every year. In the age groups for that, they the WRO is first through 12th grade. So they, they have a full range. Now the um, first Lego league has different levels. So they have first Lego league junior and first Lego league junior, junior, which is uh, one for the um, kindergarten and first grade. Then they have junior, which is like second, third, and into fourth grade. Then they have first Lego league, which is fourth grade through eighth grade. Then they, then they move out of our, um, the, the Lego kits, but they still move on in high school to do first robotics challenge and first tech challenge. And those are metal building systems. And it's WRO um, for EV3 and Spike? Yes. Do we have any more questions, you all? Well, I would like to just apologize to everyone for all of the computer issues, which I, I you know, got up this morning and made sure my document camera worked and my everything was set. And I do not know why when I went in to hop in or I had trouble getting in. And then once I got in, why my, why my setup would not work the way that it did when we practiced. So I'm, I do apologize to everyone for that. Um, two things. Um, can, uh, someone is having issues downloading Spike. Um, and then yep. can you hold up a Spike? Okay. So a the person who's having difficulty, our tech support number is 866-FIX-LEGO. So F-I-X-L-E-G-O, that's tech support, and they can help you get, get um, your Spike Hub connected, and they can also help you with downloading software. The software should be able to be downloaded from legoeducation.com. You go to resources, and then they'll see downloading products but if you're still i mean if you tried that and that's what you're saying i tried that and it didn't work then i would definitely call tech support and they can help you do they have an education version as well or do they spike have prime is uh, spike prime is only education it does not have a retail counterpart now that is the trick with the eb3 because they're 
there are both a retail and an education version. And several people have noticed that the retail version is not going to be sold anymore. They, they had a press release that said they are going to discontinue the retail version. But we are not discontinuing the EB3 version. We are, in fact, um, producing some more things to go with it. And so you should not be worried about that. And the EB3 version that is Lego Education has a lot, it's a, it's a little more expensive than the retail version, but you get a rechargeable battery and you get other sensors and um, other parts as well. And so I would highly recommend that people who think, oh my goodness, if they're going out on retail, they're going to go on sale. I do not know that they will, but you will not be happy with that in a classroom setting. They, they come in cardboard boxes. They don't come in bins that hold to hold your materials. There are no sorting trays. I mean, you're, you're not going to be happy at all with your purchase if you go to retail and you're in a classroom. Um, so... And you have to be careful if you are not going to the legoeducation.com site to download your software for EV3 because you can end up with a retail version of the software. And you don't want to do that either because that's going to be joystick. It's going to be like not really programming. Are there any other questions? Oh, I don't see any. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put into the chat my email address so that if anyone needs it, they can try and get a hold of me, especially because we had so many technical difficulties that maybe if, um, if individuals need some help with looking at a software piece, maybe if I'm only on with one person, um, on a Teams uh, site, I can show them something, okay? So they are welcome to contact me. Well, thank you, Terry, for all your help. I am so sorry that we had so many difficulties no to overcome it today. Your, it was not your fault. Um, again, like I said, we've been having some issues this morning. So thank you for sticking with this and, and your resiliency. And um, thank you all well, for being patient with this. I'm glad. Yes. And I thank all the people who just stuck it out because I know that was very frustrating and difficult for them. We appreciate it. And thank you again, Kelly. And um, Kelly has added her contact information for anyone who wants to contact her after the session. And again, all sessions, um, presentations will be posted on our Constellation site after the event is ended today, hopefully sometime before the end of this week, as well as the recordings from these sessions. They will be on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Terry. You're very welcome. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Thank mm -hmm. you.